That's a problem. Let's see what I can do about that. First, we need a plan and to go over some basic rules I've set for myself. Since I personally can't stop large-scale CO2 emissions at the source, I'll have to settle for pulling it out of the atmosphere. The basic plan is to develop a process to collect the CO2 from the air and then condense it into something that can easily be stored, preferably a solid. This process also needs to be reasonably simple to construct and maintain. CO2 has a freezing point of negative 109.3 Fahrenheit or negative 78.5 degrees Celsius and no condensation point to speak of. Freezing CO2 to create a solid would require a lot of energy and equipment I don't have. The largest CO2 sink in the world is the oceans, and that is due to some science I'll go over in more detail later. But for now, just know that a volume of water holds more CO2 than the same volume of air. I'm nowhere near the ocean, so I'm going to have to use fresh water in a container. Once I have the CO2 in the water, I need a way of extracting it. For this, I will use one of the most efficient methods in nature, algae. I've set the following rules for this project. All electrical power must be from non-grid sources. Water, air, and sunlight are the main grow ingredients. Passive systems should be used as much as possible. And recycled plant-based or inexpensive materials should be used when possible. The first major step of our project is to take the atmospheric CO2 and condense it using water. The process of concentration is based on three gas laws concerning how gases dissolve in a volume of water exposed to a mixture of gas, in our case the atmosphere. If you want to look at these equations yourself, I will have a link to this exact graphic in the description. Dalton's law states the total pressure of a gas mixture approximately equals the sum of the partial pressures of the individual gases in the mixture to the mole fractions of each gas. Raoul's law states that the partial pressure of one gas in a mixture of gases approximately equals the mole fraction of that gas times the total pressure, P. At sea level, we call this one atmosphere, or 760 millimeters of mercury. At this point, we have an atmospheric mixture of gas at a constant of one atmosphere. We can then break down the ratios of the various gases in the mixture, which are listed. The final law is Henry's law, which states the dissolved concentration of gas is approximately proportional to its partial pressure by a unique, empirically determined constant. This results in a ratio that provides the concentration of our gases of interest. For a given volume, water holds eight times the gaseous CO2 when compared to the atmosphere. Additionally, oxygen, our biggest gaseous byproduct, should maintain a one-to-one -one ratio within the water. Now that we have condensed our CO2, we now need a method to collect it. And this is where the algae comes in. As the algae consumes the CO2 in the water via photosynthesis, the water will off-gas oxygen and additional CO2 will be absorbed to maintain the gas ratio. The algae will grow, divide, and produce biomass, the only source of carbon being from the water. This results in a solid form of carbon that can be easily extracted. This brings us to the final step in our process, the storage. To remove the water from the collected biomass, a plant-based twine is used to wick the water from the collection into a second jar. This collection water is then recycled back into the grow jars. The current process has two stages of wicking, the first removing most of the water, and a second longer wicking resulting in a more sticky solid biomass. This is currently the end of my process, with the captured carbon not released back into the environment, but contained in a small jar. I hope you enjoyed this intro video to my project, and I hope to produce additional videos with my current setup, its state and health, and potential plans for scaling up. Thank you for watching.